agenda, which is a pretty light one this week. However, that said, I have some updates to share. All right. So, um, first item that I wanted to talk about today is related to the uh, the pop that we're we've got a draft, um, and we're looking to get this published by the end of the week. Um, this is um, this is the main sort of maintainer committee, let's call it, for the V zero testnet. Uh, on this call, we agreed over the last couple of calls that it's in everyone in the community's best interest to have uh, sort of a more decentralized approach to sort of maintaining testnet and that it should be kind of a multi-team effort, not a single team strategy there uh, on the, uh, you know, on the chance that a team is struggling a little bit or has some issues that we've opened some, you know, we've got some redundancy built into the the test net because we know that then blocks blocks teams from being able to like do their thing um so we've written a a, a new proposal for this like i guess some of the feedback that would be kind of interesting to get from you all is we've been thinking um a bit about what the sla should look like um the overarching feeling from our side is that um, they should pretty much mimic mainnet uh, in terms of um, you know uptime and, and things like that. However, we're also conscious that um, you know maintaining uh, our, our testnet, some testnet nodes here should should not be at a loss, and and we've only got so much budget that we can allocate. So. Um, just kind of looking for some feedback. Um, uh, if there's any, um, you know, node runners on the on the call, um, I think the the target uh, we were looking at here was uh, around two thousand a month um, per team uh, to run, you know, a node in a single geo, um, and we'd like to, you know, get some um, teams that can operate from from different geo zones, but. Um, does that, does that sound doable? Um, are we underestimating? Um, and again, like, uh, you know, testnet in terms of like performance and uptime just needs to be up. Um, I know there's some snapshots that are also available, but I, I don't believe that um, that's part of this. Jack, um, maybe you can check me if I'm wrong. Like, Could you could you restate? Yeah, the um, you don't have to. So uh, what I'm trying to do is figure out like what we wouldn't have to worry about on testnet that we would on a mainnet. So I know we, I know there is a team that is producing like mainnet snapshots. Um, do we have do we need them for test for testnet? Is well, I guess we do, but like they um, they shouldn't be as significant. Uh, and and we yeah, don't. They're not. They're not like high stakes play. or anything. Right. 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 Yeah. We and, basically and, just and need like, a test net to be functioning for people to be able to uh, to use it right. when they're testing integrations and whatnot. Yep. Yep. Right. So. Uh, so then, would it be true then that like, in terms of like what data is available, like even though there could be some teams that have some data intensive apps and they want to be able to do some stuff, but like theoretically, um, you don't even really need full archive. You just need to be at like the head of the chain, right? So we don't. Um, I that's over my head. We 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 need to speak yeah. to, yeah. Okay. All right. Well. Um, I'm trying to think like just, yeah, it, it should be pretty straightforward. I, I, so like I said, like SLAs will probably mirror mainnet, uh, in a lot of ways, but, um, but the cost should be as bad cause there's just not as much data there. Um, and, and it doesn't, um, yeah, that requirement for all these like, you know, heavy snapshots and stuff is just like 
out there. Okay. Um, all right. So, like I said, we'll, um, if no feedback, no problem. You guys can give feedback when we actually drop the pop. Um, but hopefully we'll get, um, you know, good bit of applications for that. And... Uh, okay, cool. So I guess we can move on to the next bit is related to proposals. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we gave uh, gave the coder team some feedback on their um, PIP 31, um, and they have now broken that into PIP 32, which isolates the non-custodial node running, and PIP 33, which is the, you know, taking advantage of Pocket as sort of a universal RPC provider, meaning that... Um, this concept of like RTTM, right? So uh, not just uh, blockchain networks, but they've been exploring some LLMs. There's probably other use cases out there. Um, so those are both getting some heavy feedback and commentary, but they're both uh, they're both there and and live. I don't know. We've got Coder on the call and some people that have maybe been looking at those. Um, are you guys doing? Do you need any, need any additional help? Yeah. Um, Coder is on the call. The feedback we have gotten so far is all positive. Uh, people think that the concerns have been addressed and uh, therefore we put it up for voting. Uh, the voting is going to go until next Monday. Um, so far, not much progress, you know, two uh, approves for both of them and zero rejects. I think uh, there's going to be more participation uh, towards the end of the week. But so far, I don't see or hear anyone telling us uh, this is a bad idea for this or that reason. So I think it's a good sign, but, you know, I don't want to jinx it. Uh, if there are any questions, concerns or comments in this call, I'm happy to take them. Well, that's good news that you've gotten um, positive feedback. Vote is up for both proposals and that, um, you know, it's showing, obviously, this is exactly how we want things to work. Um, community makes gives feedback, teams make changes, come back to the community, and then, like, we're all, we're all on the same page. So appreciate you guys doing that. Uh, I know it was a lot of back and forth and a bunch of work. Uh, so... Yeah, but that's great. Um, I'm glad to see the that we've gotten to the, the the part where it's now like positive momentum. So cool. Um, everyone else, if you haven't voted um, or if you haven't checked the proposals out, uh, again, they're uh, it's PIP 32 and PIP 33. Um, definitely give them a read through. That's great. Cool. Um, all right. Those are the only two uh, tips that are there from a few weeks ago. Um, so that was <laughs> that, that. That was a very fast conclusion to the agenda items that I had. Um, so now it, you know, totally the whole point of this call is to get, um, you know, kind of open it up to you all. Uh, if there's anything that uh, you'd like to bring up, and I'm watching the chat channel here as well, so if you can't talk where you are and you'd prefer to just like throw some throw some questions in the chat, whatever, feel free to do that. I'll give it a minute or two, or if anyone wants to come off mute, uh, ask a question, go for it. Hi, Matteo. Um, Hi. Suddenly, Shane is not around, but uh, it is high five is here. 
regarding the the PR that uh, that High Five made made to enable the application of Gunball. They have been talking to add all that if it is approved at the same uh, at the same time with the coders PR. So we can have only one consensus change with all those changes. Was there any uh, advancement in that front? Maybe it's for high five. Oh, yeah, good, good. Yeah, no, no, good, good question, Romero. Thanks for asking. Um, actually, so uh, just to be clear, clear um, the, uh, the, the issue in GitHub was not uh, directly related to, to the Gandalf proposal. It's, it's not, which is more of a governance thing. Like, I think, like, what Shane was trying to suggest is that ma the max chain parameter should just be reduced. Um, so actually, the the issue that we wrote was to add a max chain check to a session start. So if there are um, what we're calling suppliers now or servicers that have maybe like 20 services set up, like whatever the, the max is currently set at by governance, I believe it's 15. Check, check me if I'm wrong there. Um, if a team has gone over that, um, we weren't checking uh, at all anywhere when a session starts. So um, I believe that the PR, and I did cross-reference um, in the pull request, the original um, issue, it, wasn't, it didn't seem to get connected to each other. But uh, it's just asking for a check of that parameter um, during a session start. And that if a uh, servicer or supplier in the future uh, is is over that threshold, then they they cannot join the session, essentially. Um, and that and that anything and then it sets us up ultimately to be able to then enforce that uh, if we do change that parameter with a gov vote. Um, but that wasn't what we didn't want to go that far right now. We're just kind of setting the stage. That that was basically where. Um, we ended up. Okay, yeah, makes sense. So this change will come alongside all the the colder ones, in at the same time. Also. So I mean, at the same consensus change. Yeah. So just to jump in here, the PR that I did is it it simply enables that check to happen. Um, and all it requires is like the when the next consensus uh, breaking change goes in, uh, the, a flag is enabled, and then that max chains will be enforced at the session level. It doesn't actually do any of the Gandalf uh, stuff. It just means that if something like Gandalf was to ever decide to change that parameter, it would be enforceable on chain for all actors, uh, for all services, not just new stakes. Great, yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's the same as the. I think it's pip twenty three. It doesn't change anything at, as it is right now. So, uh, does this all, this other PR needs to go to votation? To voting or not, will it be applied? I, I don't know which is the due process. <laughs> I um I don't think it would need a vote because it it all it does is it just enforces the current behavior. Um, what it would need is a governance transaction and a chain upgrade because it is consensus breaking, but it it doesn't actually change any behavior. So I think rolling it up into the next. Uh, uh, when the CODA stuff happens, I think that would probably be the ideal situation because I, I don't see it needing a vote. But someone else yeah, so, have more input. Yeah, um, so the way that we've done it until now is that any consensus breaking change uh, needs to be explicitly approved uh, in a vote. Um, uh, this, is, uh, this is ultimately, this whole process is, is really testing um how we've established things as far as like 
uh, moving towards a world where we have multiple uh, de uh, core devs and uh, distributing that role because uh, until now it's been pretty straightforward logistically. Uh, we've had a single core dev team. They've been uh, building a new release and then that release gets uh, put forward as a uh, PIP. Um, so if you look at all of the previous protocol upgrades, it's, uh, we've, we've not, not really even had uh, the uh, for a specific feature. It's been for a, a specific release candidate uh, with a version number. Um, and that, that has been approved and that's gone forward. Um, now we have a world where uh, we have multiple independent contributions uh, to the code base. Um, and those are, uh, uh, those are not necessarily packaged together into a cohesive uh, relief. Um, so I think this is actually uh, highlighting to us uh, the need to potentially evolve uh, the process that we have for um, upgrades um, uh, to, to basically reduce the load on the DAO. Like, it's, it's a trade-off though. Like, um, when we have big features like this uh, uh, that, are, that are being submitted, we don't want them to necessarily be all bundled together and then um, popular features get voted down because they've been bundled with unpopular features or vice versa. Um, so uh, the, just to bring it back to what you were saying, Harry, um, any other consensus breaking changes would need to be formally approved as well. So what we, uh, what we should probably do is um, uh, assuming that uh, both of these proposals by Coder are approved, uh, there would obviously need to be um, ultimately a new release candidate with all of the consensus breaking uh, features in them. And then we probably need to do another vote uh, for that release candidate uh, just to ratify that all of the consensus breaking changes are approved by the DAO. Um, but yeah, I think this is one to watch because we might want to explore ways to to make that whole approval process more efficient and less um yeah reducing the number of um votes that we would have to to, to to coordinate in order to approve various different features as part of a release so yeah great thanks so it's concerning though right it's not the most efficient way because you know these PIP 32, 33, whatever is being individually voted. And then we have another vote, maybe there's five changes in it. And if someone has an issue with any of them, it's going to bring down the whole release, derail the whole thing. I would say, yeah. you know, if something is big enough, it's its own PIP. That, that's it. Uh, and then yeah. we know what's going to ship and what is not going to ship. Yeah, so maybe for this uh, next release, um, we should, uh, if there are other consensus breaking changes, we should have those voted on independently of these two that are currently um, being voted on. If that, if that other vote fails, then, uh, and these two current proposals pass, then they go forward anyway. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think. I think ultimately the, the the best approach is going to have to have some kind of like queuing system where uh, uh, features are submitted to the the, the code base. Um, there's basically there's pending pending PRs or, or whatever representing these different features, um, and then we do like a batch vote uh, where rather than like a straight up yes no on a single vote, there's like um, a couple of options uh, that people can vote on, and uh, like so, so like having the one vote where all of the features are listed, um, and then people vote on each of those, um, and only the features that pass the threshold of being approved then get bundled into the release candidate and merged um, into the code base. Um, that seems like something along those lines feels more efficient, but we we need to, yeah, we need to define that and then uh, and and then yeah, get that get that approved by the DAO. Um, just to jump in, actually, I think in this specific case, maybe it's better to the PR I made to ignore it unless Gandalf goes through, 
Um, and that way it doesn't get caught up in Coda's PR at uh, 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 Pips. Um, like like you're saying, if if people don't don't want something, it, you don't want to derail the other the other things. And seeing as the um, the PR I made is only really useful if something like not specifically Gandalf, but if something like Gandalf, where we want to change that parameter in the future, occurs, maybe it's best to just wait on this PR until until that proposal, Gandalf or another one, is approved. Um, and then in that situation, do a release that enforces the enforces the parameter so that the proposal uh, to change the parameter can then be acted on, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think there's more that we that we need to think on here. Um, we, yeah, we, we ultimately don't want to block um, any proposals like Gandalf from being able to be voted on. Um, I mean, it would be good to understand whether there's actually appetite for Gandalf um, first before time is expended, um, merging um, and trying to get it included in a release. But um, yeah, there's, I think I think ultimately there needs to be an upgrade to the process for protocol releases as it relates to pips. Uh, but we we don't want to delay. Um, shipping any features uh, for that. Um, so we, we need to strike a balance here. I think this is something Matteo and I should, should discuss more. Yeah, agreed. One last comment about that uh, enforcing max sessions. I wouldn't necessarily agree that it is just enforcing of what was the plan of record before. Uh, that parameter was in the past applicable to staking time, because pocket is you know stake once and then stay there forever. Uh, the reward system, a lot of things, it is uh, stake time, uh, and you know in, in a lot of regards, as parameters change, they may or may not uh, impact you, and this. You know, it's debatable that it is actually enforcing uh, what was, you know, the uh, plan of record versus introducing new behavior. I'm not saying we shouldn't do it, but I'm not saying maybe it is not as trivial as a bug fix. Okay, so I mean, I think what happened is that that came out of that actual t issue came out of a conversation about Gandalf in one of the first builder calls from like uh probably a few months ago. Um and so what it seems like where we may have m missed a process step is that instead of that just becoming a ticket on in the backlog on the board that we didn't want to forget about um it, it should have then become some kind of pre-Gandalf uh, proposal that actually did require community feedback. Do we even want to add this check, et cetera? Here's the issue. Um, you know, we get the content in there, but it seems like we missed, we sort of missed that step. And it was like, we just kind of jumped right to... Um, Oh, this is like a precursor. It's not really enabling the Gandalf proposal. It's just kind of a, you know, something we would need so that we could do it in the future. But it, what I'm hearing now is that even that should have gone through um, some it, some process. So I think, Jack, like, I, I, the point I, here is not... Yeah. Maybe we just missed a step, and that's how we got to where we are right now. Well, and it's not about creating new steps. It's just like we missed that one. No, I don't. I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't know that it's not that we've missed a step in a process. It's that the process itself is inefficient if we're receiving uh, 
we're receiving different features and PRs from independent uh, developers. Before we had one monolithic developer that put everything together into one release candidate, and then that release candidate got ratified with a vote. Now we have multiple independent features being submitted uh, that we don't necessarily know whether the, uh, the DAO actually wants to have. Um, and then we need to somehow be able to get the DAO's input on these features efficiently and then bundle them into a release candidate that has been ultimately approved by the DAO. So, um, and, and, and like if we, did, if we did it the way we do it now, we basically have uh, several different votes um, uh, independently for each feature. Um, uh, so yeah, I think I think ultimately, yeah, basically the the, the 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 main misconception to clear up here is is what Harry said earlier, which is that we can just put this in because it's not really material. If it's a consensus breaking change, we we can't be flexible on that. It has to be voted on by the DAO. Any consensus breaking change has to be approved by the DAO. Otherwise, we completely throw out any legitimacy around the protocol being governed by the DAO. Like, there's, there's no flex. So even if it feels like a small feature, if it's changing the consensus rules, there needs to be a PIP that is approving that feature. The question uh, is around the efficiency of doing those PIPs. Like, do we want to put this one feature that Harry, that Harry shipped into a pit by itself, or do we want to bundle with it? Bundle it with other potential features. Uh, we've already got two features that have been put forward unbundled. Uh, the two that have been uh, submitted by Coder. Uh, we got they got feedback that uh, their previous proposal failed because they were bundled. So that suggests because that they were bundled. Features, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's yeah, yeah, yeah. So that suggests right. that features need to be unbundled now moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, maybe maybe the process is just that people submit their features and if they're consensus breaking, they need a PIP. And then whichever PIPs yep. get approved before the release cycle uh, yep. gets gets included in the release candidate. I'm a bit confused okay. on this though, because okay. hasn't every other release been, like you said, a bundle of other changes? I personally, I voted for the previous PIP 31 and I voted for both of these PIPs. They are the, They are a bundle. Whether you think about them as separate or not, they one enables the other, and I don't. I don't think that the history of protocol changes up till now, anybody has said these shouldn't be bundled, because every other protocol update has had numerous changes within it. Yeah, so so that's what I was saying earlier. Like every other protocol release until now has been pushed by the same developer team that everyone has uh, trust in and they haven't had like uh, the features haven't been controversial per se. Um, mm. Like basically every release candidate until now, every vote has been, hey, Andrew, Louise, Olshansky, the, the core developers have put together this release uh, with the core developer team. Do you agree with having these features? Now we've got multiple teams like, hey, we want this feature in, we want this feature in. Uh, it's coming from all places. Um, and so it's not necessarily easy for us to say, hey, we're just going to put these all together into one bundle and have the DAO vote on it because the DAO may not want certain features. Um, and we can't have like the whole thing be voted down because of one like poison pill uh, uh, that that just puts the DAO off of the upgrade. So I think this is saying like this is we need to we're needing to evolve how we're doing it based on the fact that we're decentralizing the development of the protocol. Why don't we think yeah. about a sort yeah. of like a a micro pip strategy where we propose a bundle and instead of voting on the bundle you vote on the micro pips or embed it up like the sub pips whatever you want to call them and then the outcomes of those votes determines what's included in the bundle so still we have one bundle from numerous developers however each item in the bundle is voted on individually as uh, like like a multiple choice question 
you say, do you want to vote for PIP31? It includes these two micro PIPs. I tick the checkbox on the first one. I don't click the checkbox on the second one, for example. And then the votes are tallied up and we say, okay, so this, this proposal is happening um, and these are the changes that are going to come through it according to the vote. However, it's still one proposal yeah. with numerous uh, like tick boxes almost. So it's so that's, not, that's, what's not, go ahead, basically what Jack already had. Yeah, that's basically what Jack had already suggested. But like, let's bring this up a, a level if, if we could. Um, uh, so we are voting on things individually, right? Um, if PIP yep. 32 and 3 pass here by coder, I don't think we need to re-vote on including them no. in the next release. No. Okay, So what we're talking about are additional PRs um, that may, like, and, and again, like, that's why I'm suggesting that, like, we just missed a step with this one because of the nature of how it came to be, Um and Shane, I, I see that Shane joined, so let's like catch him up really quickly. Shane, we're talking about um, it. I think it was actually the first builder call that we did. We talked about Gandalf, and then you and I wrote an issue that said we don't have to implement Gandalf. That's a governance change. But what we could do is we could set the stage for it by adding this max chains check as part of the session start. And we wrote that ticket. We dropped it in the backlog. And then it was like, well, who's going to work on it? Well, I don't know if we even have the resources to do that right now. It was just hanging out. Somehow, like within the last week or two, um, Harry saw it and or somebody else pu pulled it out of the backlog and started doing some work on it. And now we have a PR. So all I think we need to do here is that um, perhaps Shane can see the PR drop it into a proposal and go, this is a pre-Gandalf thing where we just want to have this check. Here's the PR. Anyone can go review it. That's all it's doing. We'd like to include it in the next um, release. Uh, let's get a vote going on this thing. And we can have a vote on that like pretty quickly, right? Um, and then yeah, like, what, that makes, what, that makes what actually, sense. Jack, what I think you're calling out though, it, rightly so, is when the next release gets put together, anything that's going to be yep. part of it, you need to be able to provide to the evidence approved. that it was that it was approved. Exactly. And if there's anything yep. that hasn't yep. been approved, then it should not be part of the release candidate. Um, yeah. So I really think like I think to tie to that back. Yeah. yeah I, I, I'm. 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 Yeah. This is becoming very clear. So basically, what we're saying is. We've actually not missed a step for the, the Gandalf check. It's just that we've not done that step yet. And we would need to do that step before we can include it in the release. Uh, what we're talking about here is basically unbundling. Uh, the change that's happening here is we're not voting on a release. We're voting on a feature. And then the features are being bundled into a release. So before we've had people vote on Release candidate 0 0.8, release candidate 0 0.10, et cetera. Um, we're not going to have, uh, like that was a little bit weird, uh, but we're not going to have votes on release candidates anymore. Um, we're going to have votes on distinct features. Um, we don't have to get too granular with it. Like if there's a bunch of minor bug fixes, they could be bundled together. Um, but the point is, if there are like significant features that are being put forward, like the two that Coder are proposing, and the Gandalf check. Um, these need to be voted on in a pit. And, and really, whether they're voted on in their own proposal or part of a multiple choice, it doesn't really change anything um, if, if it's coming out around like a similar period of time because people have to vote on multiple proposals regardless. And whether they're clicking yes, no, yes, no, yes, no on three proposals or a checkbox within one, they're still making the same amount of decisions. Um, we can explore batches if it becomes a burden, but I don't think we need to overcomplicate things for now. I think really all that's happening here is we're saying every consensus breaking feature has to have an, uh, a PIP that has been approved in order to be eligible for the, the release candidate. And then we do cyclical release candidates 
uh, that would be led by um, uh, the maintainers, uh, by Mateo, etc., um, that basically say, okay, which features are we including in this release? Uh, these are all the features that have an approved PIP. Okay, here we go. We're, we're, like, we're all good. Green light, let's go. Um, and if you have a feature that you want and you want it to be included in a release candidate, then you need to make sure that it has been, the PR has been submitted and the, uh, the PIP has been approved prior to that release candidate, uh, what, like when it is scheduled. So I think in the long run, we would look to have um, release cycles actually be um, uh, standardized and scheduled. And then people are working to get their features in and approved before that release um, so that people aren't able to hold up releases um, uh, as well. They can, if they missed it, if they missed the deadline, then they can, uh, then they can go into the next release candidate. That, uh, yeah, that, that, that makes perfect sense to me. Um, are we all aligned on that? Yeah, I wanted to uh, add one more uh, kind of comment of clarity. Uh, so really appreciate, you know, hacking through all this and, and coming up with kind of a systematic way to do this. Uh, the only uh, the only minor descriptive change that I would suggest uh, with the Max Change PR is it's not uh, adding any new feature. Uh, it's more of a bug fix because the DAO has been under the assumption that Max Chains was a valid uh, parameter that was usable, and it turns out it actually wasn't usable. So, uh, so you know, Jack, you had mentioned, you know, if there's little bug changes or bug fixes or something like that that are, uh, uh, you know, being added to optimize, you know, something or, or address something, then. Uh, you know, then it should, uh, then it doesn't necessarily need to go through a, a long kind of bureaucratic, uh, bureaucratic uh, process. It could just, you know, be considered a bug fix. So, uh, you know, the max chains technically is just adding a check so that uh, the parameter actually does what it's intended to do and what the, you know, design of, uh, design of the parameter uh, was essentially intended for. Um, but because it's never been tried to be changed, no one realized that it would create this kind of, uh, you know, issue with grandfathered in nodes. So if, you know, if, if, if it's, if, if we consider the max chains parameter, you know, a, you know, like new feature, uh, then, you know, I'm, I'm happy to go through a pip. Um, I would just actually bring that dis distinction. Um, cause there will be yeah. you know, potentially a later Gandalf proposal that then is proposing, you know, it's actual usage or something, but this isn't, that would be, anything. yeah, it, it is, it is. So let me clarify. So the Gandalf proposal would be a PUP and we'd be setting parameters. Um, and those would be voted on. Um, the reason that this is changing something is it is changing the consensus rule. So it doesn't matter if it's considered a bug fix rather than a new feature. If it's changing the consensus rule, that is something that needs to be approved by the DAO. If you look at previous release candidates, uh, uh, pre previous pips like RC 0 0.10, like we have, a, we've had several of them now. If you look at the notes for those, uh, a lot of them contain very minor bug fixes, but they are uh, consensus rule changes. The um, the the basically uh, create um, a fork in the way that things are done, uh, which is ultimately why we're having to get majority adoption by validators before those are activated, um, and so they need uh, they need a pip, um, no matter how small uh, the feature feels. Okay, that brings clarity. So even if it's uh... Uh, even if it's you know addressing something uh, that's not necessarily adding a new feature, but it is fixing something that will require a consensus change, that that uh, yep. that in general always requires a pin. Okay, that that makes sense, and that brings yep. some clarity. And and this has all been really helpful. So uh, thank you, Shane, and, and and anyone else who has asked questions about this, because um, the process that we've had has not been 
clearly defined, and this has been a really helpful discussion. We're now going to be able to uh, update all of our documentation and, and make sure that for any other contributors in the future that want to that want to uh, join and, and add stuff to the protocol, it's going to be super clear for everyone involved. Cool. I like how these meetings go. They feel like they're we're, we're we're struggle and then bang, like then we get on a topic and they finish strong. So that's been like that's how these guys go. We rock. <laughs> yeah. Good convo. All right. Does anyone have anything else they want to uh, throw out there, or we can? Yeah, I'll, I'll just say that, that I'm, I'm yeah. planning on. Uh, uh, I did actually already start on a uh, if um, for uh, the Max Chains PR, so I'll push that out this week. Um, so yeah, okay, Shane, awesome. We should have everything. Uh, unless there's other pits that are to come or something, but at least with the ones that have been openly discussed, uh, the DAO should have everything this week. Great. Thank you, Shane. Awesome. All right. Anybody else going once? I don't know if this has been uh, talked about earlier or something, but um, uh, now that we have a, a process for um, submitting pips, uh, is there any is there any structure or uh, yeah any existing structure for testing pips? With like the uh, you know with the core team, do we do we have any process for that before it gets into you know final release? I'm, I'm just trying to think of like max chains. I submit the PR uh, and then and then I, I guess I'm just not sure what the really what the follow up of it is if it's yeah that's a good yeah. question. Um, maybe one of the devs that uh, it's on or Jack, maybe you know, like when we do re release candidate, I haven't been here. I don't think for actual release yet. Uh, does it end up on testnet first or is it like boom production protocols updated and everybody upgrades? Like what, how does it go? Yeah. So um, we, we have more that we need to publish on this uh, as well um, around decentralizing uh, core development. Um, and, uh, and ultimately, uh, taking the load off of, uh, Oshansky and, uh, and, and that whole team that is driving forward, uh, Rollkit and Celestia and the launch of the Shan specification. Uh, so Mateo and I have been working on this, um, and we have, um, we're going to be publishing some, um, uh, details around our, our thoughts around the future of uh, the protocol development uh, operations, so to speak, uh, and actually decentralizing core development and and bringing on more uh, more teams to be um, and and maintaining things. Um, so we, in terms of like a, a release um, uh, for like an upgrade like this. Uh, it would go through. It should go through all the standard um, process that, that all previous releases have gone through. So that means um, uh, doing the upgrade on testnet, um, doing all of the testing within testnet, um, and uh, and making sure everything is working smoothly before ultimately um, taking it to mainnet. Um, so I guess the PIP uh, would 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 signal um, approval of the of the candidate, um, and uh, and then all the testing would take place uh, within testnet, and then um, and then yeah, once we're once we're all we're confident that it's all good to go, then we.
when we, we release the software, the nodes are updating it, and um, the uh, uh, yeah, and then and then the governance transaction is submitted once there's a majority. So um, yeah, we would be looking to to take it all through the through the standard process, um, and I think yeah. It's on, it's on uh, Matteo and I's backlog that we, we need to publish more details around this. Does that answer things for you, Shane? Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, I, I just assume that a, uh, you know, a protocol dev or team or something like that would put, you know, some time into Green testnet, you know, putting the candidate release together, testing out yeah. testnet and everything like so, that. So yeah, so I can expand on that more as well. So um, uh, as Matteo mentioned earlier on the call, we have a pop that's going to be coming out uh, to try to enlist more uh, teams to do testnet maintenance uh, for us. Like so far, uh, we've been relying on uh, NodeFleet to be the sole maintainer of testnet. Uh, they opened a socket. Uh, several months ago, uh, and have been um, the only team really uh, working on that. Um, so now we're looking to uh, distribute that and bring on a couple more teams to work on that. Um, uh, just to enable testnet to be more resilient, um, ultimately, and, and enable all of that to be smoother. So um, we're not going to really be enlisting uh, the Shannon team, I guess we could call them um uh for testnet maintenance and then as far as v0 um we've been speaking to coder about uh whether we can enlist their help uh in um in the maintenance of v0 which they're 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 happy to do um they've also uh demonstrated a lot of experience with previous releases um uh previous submissions um across v0 so um, I think we'll be in good hands uh, with them um, helping out on the V0 side of things. Uh, and again, uh, protecting the attention of uh, the Shannon team uh, from not having to, 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 to context switch from building the Shannon spec uh, to having to like test and, and coordinate the releases of, of V0 features. So ultimately, the, the approach that I, I mentioned that Matteo and I need to publish more on is really looking to empower members of the community to step up and play a more active role in all areas of maintenance of, of the protocol. So that's testnet, um, which the pop is coming out very, very soon. And we have the mainnet snapshots, which the Liquify team have been doing. Uh, Coder have released their own uh, snapshot tech as well uh, for pruning and, and whatnot. Um, we've got Coder are going to be helping um, helping us with V0 maintenance and uh, the release cycle. Um, and yeah, we're re really looking to just like distribute that as much as possible and um, and preserve the attention of the Shannon team. All right. Thanks for all the thanks for all the feedback there, Jack. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we're pretty much almost at time anyway. So if um, anybody has anything else they want to bring up. If not, we can call it right here. Thumbs up if we're good to go. Cool. All right. I appreciate all the feedback once again. Um, we've got notes. We've got some action items that we will follow up with. Um, look for the pop uh, within the next day or two. And yeah, moving right along. Thanks, everybody.